Equine Infectious Anemia Equine infectious anemia was one of the first animal diseases discovered to be caused by a virus, which at that time was called a filterable agent. The equine infectious anemia virus is an enveloped, single-stranded, positive-sense RNA lentivirus of the family Retroviridae. It has a tropism for monocytes and macrophages and is primarily bloodborne, but potentially all body fluids can be infectious. Transmission is through contact with virus-infected blood. This can happen through biting flies or blood-contaminated syringes, needles, or surgical equipment. The virus doesn't replicate in the biting flies, though. Neither does it do that on the syringe. So this mode of transmission is solely mechanical. After a biting fly feeds on one horse, some blood remains on its mouth parts and it brings the contaminated blood with it when it feeds on another horse. The most efficient flies that do this are horse flies, deer flies, and stable flies. Rarely, though, transplacental transmission happens when a pregnant mare experiences a clinical episode, which increases the viral load, during pregnancy. So when the virus enters the bloodstream, monocytes are infected. And viremia occurs. I don't think I've said this in previous videos before, but vir refers to virus and emia means presence in blood. Yeah, just getting that out of my system. Okay. This triggers an immune response and the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, like tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and transforming growth factor beta. Together, these can induce a fever and suppress the production of platelets and erythrocytes in the bone marrow thrombocytopenia and anemia being prominent clinical signs of the disease. Immune-mediated destruction can also happen, with platelets and erythrocytes covered in immunoglobulins and complement respectively being destroyed. And when these cells die, the spleen and liver have to take care of them. Too much can lead to splenomegaly and hepatomegaly. Eventually, the immune system will get the infection under control and the horse will feel better. But episodes of clinical disease can recur if the immune response weakens, or a viral variant emerges. Actually, the disease doesn't present the same way in all horses. It depends on the horse's susceptibility, the viral dose, and the virulence of the virus strain. Some horses are unable to control the initial viral infection and become acutely and severely ill, and die. Some may get sick initially, and have recurring episodes of on and off illness throughout their lives. And others may get infected and get a little sick, then not get any more episodes, becoming asymptomatic carriers of equine infectious anemia. Diagnosis Because the responses to infection are so varied, diagnosis cannot be made based off of clinical signs. We must check for antibodies to see if the horse has been infected by the virus. These are called serologic tests. And the gold standard for equine infectious anemia is the agar gel immunodiffusion, or Coggins test. Named after its inventor Leroy Coggins. ELISA tests can also be done because they are faster, but are more likely to give false positives. Thus, all ELISA positive results should still go through Coggins tests to make sure that they are really positive. The thing about serologic tests is that they test for antibodies, which don't appear until 10 to 14 days after infection. So they'll come up negative when the horse was infected in the last 10 to 14 days. You can test for viral antigen with RT PCR. But this is not routinely done. And this may not detect the virus if the viral load is low, such as in carrier horses. Which is a lot of horses. So anyway, when you've identified the infected horses, there is no treatment for them. They are infected for life. What you should do is prevent other horses from getting infected. The infected horses should be kept at least 200 meters away from other horses. Horses entering shows or races are usually required to present proof of a negative equine infectious anemia test. And they should be tested routinely.
usually every year, as part of their health program. Of course, control of biting flies in stables would help. So, to summarize, equine infectious anemia is an infectious disease of horses that can present fairly variably. The equine infectious anemia virus is an enveloped, single-stranded RNA lentivirus in the family Retroviridae. It is a blood-borne infection transmitted mechanically by biting flies and iatrogenically through contaminated instruments. Episodes of fever, thrombocytopenia, and anemia are clinical signs of the disease, but some may remain clinically normal and be carriers. The gold standard for diagnosis is the Coggins test. No treatment nor vaccine is available.